experience bonding with someone sexually. This is an artifact of green ray energy exchange. When this happens to two people for the first time, the experience imprints itself and bonds the mated pair. Some call it falling in love, however, it's more like falling into energy exchange. In actuality, both of the mates are falling for the creator, and the full experience of all the creator's energy as reflected through the mate's energy in free exchange. Another way we see green ray activation is in the lives and service of those who work within society to affect relief from hunger for the starving, increased awareness of truth for the ignorant, and the many ways people respond with compassion to the felt needs of the people around them. Contribution from us all in the face of disaster is a green ray inspired charity, and how wonderful it feels to give from an open heart. The green ray body is that body which shall exist in the next density or plane of existence after this earthly life. We occasionally see a ghost if we attend materialization seances clad in that cigar smoke-like stuff we call ectoplasm. That is the material from which the green ray physical body will be made. For now we are muddling along nicely in our yellow ray bodies, which are the dense, chemically active physical vehicles within which we enjoy life at present. Our earth is itself becoming a green ray activated being at this time. The green ray energy is heavily interpenetrating our earth vibrations, which are yellow ray. This interpenetration has caused a stark rise in mental and emotional dysfunction among people who are not yet able to face their true self for the first time. The energy of green ray is one of shining truth. Be aware as these waves of green ray energy continue to buffet the planet ever more heavily, that you shall need to face yourself very honestly and squarely in the days to come and take responsibility for seeing the truth about yourself and forgiving yourself for aspects of that truth and turning to new life with those aspects amended. The orientation of the influx of this new green ray energy into the aura of Earth is 20 degrees east of north. The magnetic center of Earth has been shifting in this direction for some time and is very close to arriving at its new home. There have been a lot of weather disturbances in the last few decades which may be seen to be loosely connected to the shift in magnetic orientation on Earth. A lot has been written about the apocalypse or rapture which involve a scenario where we are removed from the Earth all at once and taken either to heaven or hell. My spirit sources, however, indicate that we will continue to birth babies but from now on the babies being born will almost always have both the yellow ray body and the green ray body activated via changes in their DNA. As time goes on, there will gradually be evolution of this DNA so that the babies born are activated purely in green ray bodies and then the transition will be complete. This process is likely to take hundreds of years. I open my arms and embrace your spirit. May your heart open like a flower today under the influence of beauty, truth, and the compassion of the people you meet. And may you with your open heart touch the lives of many with the sunshine of your love. If you have a pulse, you can't avoid sin. We found that our energy and joy can be blocked in the three lowest rays, red, orange, and yellow. These are generally blocked because of trouble with sexuality and survival issues, red ray, personal relationships with the self and others, orange ray, and legal and familial relationships like work, marriage, and family, yellow ray. When they are blocked, we feel listless, depressed, and out of energy. We looked at the incredibly powerful green ray energy center, the heart center, and I have talked about the personal power which is ours by our very nature being one with the creator, and how in green ray we can finally rest in unconditional love. I would like to look at green ray a bit more. There is a central and usually completely forgotten aspect of working with the green ray upon which I'd like to focus. That aspect is the need to integrate our entire whole complete self into our self-perceived selfhood as we approach the gates of the green ray. Here's what I mean by that. Have you been to New York City and seen the lions guarding the steps of the main branch of the New York Public Library? There's quite a bit of acreage on those steps. You can linger and chat, sightsee and plan your day before you ever go into the building. While you are on those steps, you are not responsible for getting into the library with all its rich resources. You're just visiting. That is generally how we enter our own hearts. We are not really aware of where our energy is. We are sightseers. We walk up those steps in our ordinary everyday consciousness. We want to enter and experience the relief of being truly and unconditionally loved. However, we're not ready to do that. We're not ready because we have not yet collected our entire range of characteristics. We have left out of our equation of selfhood what Jung calls our shadow side. In our conscious minds, we do not wish to see the shadow side, the angry, lustful, greedy, selfish, and self-involved person who is standing before the lions at the gate. And yet that shadow side is infinitely worthy. It is part of the warp and woof of our humanity. How desperately it needs our attention, how it longs for our respect and our willingness to integrate those dark energies into our whole self. To figure out what your own shadow side looks like, examine a mirror of those things which really bother you, disgust you or make you turn aside and avert your eyes. For myself, those thorns which catch me within myself are pride, haste and judgment, the arrogance of feeling as though I get the big picture, a critical nature, and an Irish temper which does not wait to discover the truth but lashes out in a heartbeat, often mistaking the facts and doing damage to my nearest and dearest. These are not large sins. They are, however, things of which I do not wish to observe and accept within myself. These are the energies which I must own, accept, love, and redeem. Whatever your own tally of less attractive traits might be, the truth of their petty nature is probably the same. Most of us do not murder outright. We do not steal outright. 
We do not commit adultery outright. We think about doing some or all of the above. And when we approach the lions at the gate of the inner sanctum of our own hearts, we need to gather all of our less attractive traits up in our own loving arms, embrace them with true affection, and ask them persuasively to join the good side of ourselves. For either the whole self walks into the inner sanctum of the open, sacred heart, or nothing of us reaches the sanctum sanctorum. There's a wonderful old hymn which begins, O Jesus, thou art standing outside the fast-closed door, in lowly silence waiting to cross the threshold o'er. Shame on us, Christian brothers, whose name and sign we bear, and shame thrice shame upon us who keep him standing there. I love that old song, and sing it often. However, I believe the poet got the image backwards. Jesus, the carrier of Christhood and its unconditional love, is part and parcel of the consciousness of the inner sanctum of the open heart. It is we who stand outside the fast-closed door. It is love itself which waits us within. Why do we wait to enter? Because we do not feel worthy. And, in a way, this is true. We are human. It is impossible not to sin, said the Church Fathers, and they are correct. We are humans and error-prone. In another way, the way of faith and resurrection from the persistent darkness of material earth energy, we are infinitely worthy, not because we are perfect, but because we are part of the principle of creator and creation, and get we are a powerful spin going in individual energy centers. These sometimes magnificently brilliant centers are locked away from their own power as long as the energy pipeline as a whole is significantly blocked or overactivated anywhere along the line. The usual error of seekers is to have a wonderful time working on the higher energy centers without giving sufficient respect and honor to the lower centers. Clearing the whole system daily by means of thinking about the thoughts you have had and the actions you have done this day is greatly recommended by the channeling source. This balance is especially important when you consider your desire to move upon death from this life to what we have been trained in this culture to think of as the kingdom of heaven. The raw group calls this heaven world fourth density or the density of love and understanding. Our earth world is called by them the density of choice. Without being able to achieve a sturdy balance of the energies in our energy pipeline, we will not only suffer from a lack of joy and an inability to do metaphysical work like meditation, but also we will not be able to graduate into fourth density because we will not be capable of sustaining the impact of the love and light of intelligent infinity to the extent necessary for harvest. Harvest in no way resembles the classic after-death scenario of our culture, with its pearly gates and judgment day, unless one can imagine the pearly gates set at the division between third density and fourth density along what the raw group calls the steps of light, and unless one can accept the one's own self is the only judge. The spirit, after going through physical death, moves in the indigo ray body to a position in the so-called inner planes, where it is determined by the soul itself whether or not it is ready for harvest. The spirit, if ready to walk the steps of light and ascertain harvestability, moves into its violet ray body and walks along these ascending steps, with each step containing a more densely packed version of the love and the light of the infinite creator. When the spirit is at its most comfortable in this intensifying light, it stops. If it has stopped before the pearly gates, which the raw group calls the gateway to intelligent infinity, the spirit's next incarnation will continue to be in a third density environment. If the spirit's vibrations are such that it can enjoy a more intense light and it stops on a fourth density step, then it has graduated. That spirit's harvest to fourth density is complete. Then the spirit moves back into the indigo ray body to move on into the next placement within incarnation or within the inner planes if that has been chosen as the next path of service. The vital position is the place from which all invocations and evocations occur. Whether the activity is considered good, as in the case of channeling inspired material, or whether the activity is considered evil, as in the case of psychic greeting, the raw group says that they used my violet ray center to come through the gateway of intelligent infinity and work with me to produce their channeled material. Coming down into and resting in my blue ray center, the communication and inspiration chakra to do their work with our research group. In other positive contact through violet ray, some sources move to the green ray heart center to offer healing vibrations through a channel and other sources work with the spirit itself within indigo ray as it enlarges its faculties of faith and hope. I open my arms and embrace your spirit. Rejoice this day in your uniqueness and feel the power of your energy body flexing as you move through your day, dealing with humor and patience as you encounter the inevitable unkindness of this day in such a way as to transmute them to responses full of genuinely felt love and light. You are the light of the world. With all of that said, we must look at the energy body and the power of choice. What a powerhouse the energy body is. The energy may be thought of as electrical. When the infinite supply of the Creator's energy is flowing easily through our pipeline, we feel good. That energy contains love and the light. And as it flows through our chakras, it takes on our colorations, exiting at the top of the head's violet ray chakra in a radiating, glowing vibration that is like a candle flame. The halos of the saints catch this palpable glow of blessed and released light. 